Hi, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another inspirational, motivational, uh, through the Bible ministries uh, word for the day. All right, what I want to do this time, uh, everybody loves a good story. And one of the best types of stories there are ever in history uh, that we just love is like the king leaves the palace, goes out dressed in common rags, and then one day the people that treated him one way or the other uh, see him in his true form. They say that King Richard, I think, used to do it, or there were certain kings. They said Buddha did it. Buddha went and walked among the common people. But um, there's a really cool analogy in today's time. What they have, it's called Undercover Boss. And an owner, a CEO of a re worldwide chain restaurant will go and act like a humble dishwasher or a cook. And he'll see how the people treat each other. He'll see how they treat him. And some of the best things is when one uh, a business owner will go and he gets treated really badly and just like garbage. And then they come out and they sit there on the stools and the guy looks him in the face and is like, oh my gosh, you're, you're the owner of the taco chain in America or whatever. And then he has to settle up. He sees him. And the premise of stories like this, like, I have something that I really hate being misunderstood. Uh, if people see me in a wrong light or not for who I really am or just, I hate that, being misunderstood. And I love it when people get credit for who they are or get truly acknowledged for who they are. Um, and what I'm going to read today out of the Bible is a really big premise on that situation. So, you know, Jesus, of course, came to this world. And if you'll turn in your Bible to Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 14 and a verse do, 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 do 61, I believe. And it's also in the book of Matthew. And it's, it's worded really well in a few of the different translations. But this is what's going on. Jesus is finally, they finally have him. They've got him in front of them. And they're questioning him. Hey, uh, did you say you could tear down the temple and rebuild it in three days? He doesn't answer a word. Okay, uh, you know, did you, did you heal a man on the Sabbath day? And they just bring in accusations and lies. And they're just pegging him. And you know human nature. And I have this really bad, I always answer people right back. I want to defend people, you know, and you might have that personality too, or you want to defend yourself. You want to say something. Someone's saying something about you, it's not true. You want to snap right back. And I have a tendency to do that. But Christ is just standing there silent, like a silent, silent, you know, before his accusers and just a lot of people. So... Let me go. I'll actually start right here. The chief priests and other religious leaders called for witnesses against Jesus so they could execute him. But things didn't turn out the way they planned. There were plenty of people willing to get up and accuse Jesus falsely, distorting what Jesus had said or done. But that testimonies, they didn't never agreed with each other and the leaders were left with nothing. Some gave the following distorted testimony. We heard him say, I'll destroy the temple and rebuild it in the temple made by human hands, and in three days I'll build another one that is not made by human hands. But even here, the witnesses could not agree on exactly what he said. So the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Do you have anything to say in your own defense? What do you think of what all these people have said about you? But Jesus just held his peace. He didn't say a word. Okay. So a couple things going on here. I'm going to get to the next verse. It's real important. <clears throat> The next thing, so Jesus is in front of his accusers and they're talking about him and he's not defending himself. And you got to know, he was very vocal before. He would speak and expose them and say things and, you know, basically equating himself with God and just, you know, who he was. But at this point in time, they're just lying about him. They're talking, they're trying to frame him and he's just not saying anything. So finally... The priest is getting frustrated and he finally looks at him and he says, I adjure you by the living God. Are you the Christ, the son of God? Are you the anointed one? Are you the Messiah? And the key words in this is he adjures him. He basically says, I put you under oath. I, 
I, you have to, I swear by the living God that you need to tell me, are you the Christ, the Son of God? So Jesus, you know, he's, he's in a court and he's being adjured by the living God. You know, are you the Son of God? Now here's the verse that ties in everything. Jesus said, I am. And one day you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand in the place of power and honor and coming in the clouds of heaven. So Jesus being adjured by the living God says, I am, I am the Christ and you're gonna see me coming. It was calling me, let me see. Hello. All right, so here's the whole point. So then he says, once they adjure him, are you the Christ? He says, I am the Christ. And here's the greatest thing in the world, but here's the hope and all this horrible, terrible stuff. You're gonna see me for who I really am, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, God's right hand, and coming in the clouds of power and glory. So up to this point, Christ <clears throat> was getting beat up. Right now, he's like a criminal with everybody against him. He's a guy standing there with his sandals and a robe, and <clears throat> he is getting beat down. But you know what? The hope in all this is, yeah, I am the Son of God, and you're going to see me for who I really am. You're right now that employee treating the owner's son like garbage, and one day you're going to see me sitting at my dad's right-hand side, coming with all the power. We're going to have to have another meeting. You're going to sit across from me, and you're going to see that I'm the Messiah. I'm the powerful, the Son of God. So I love this because just imagine one of those undercover bosses where the boss gets picked on, he gets belittled. The people are too big for their britches and they're insulting him and they're just all beating on him. And guess what? He's like, okay, you know what? I actually am the owner of this company. And in a, in a couple days here at a certain time, you're gonna have to sit down and give an, an account to me of what you've been doing, how you've been treating me, your fellow employees. So the movies are always a great success where the guy gets run out of town treated like garbage and then he comes back with all of his splendor and glory and maybe his his amigos riding with him and he's in his glory so i just if you can get that theme about jesus down into your heart that yeah he came here he got lied on spit on beard ripped out but look at the hope one day, all creation, not just this guy who adjured him, not just the high priest at that time who said, are you the son of God? Everybody's going to see him sitting in his rightful place. So maybe you in life go through things too. You, you're never really appreciated for who you really are. But don't worry, God is a day of reckoning for you too. He will not let his people go unfulfilled and un. You're going to get your due. You're going to get your credit. Look at Joseph. He went through all the horrible things, but he eventually got to where God wanted him to be. You know, he got, he was the second only to Pharaoh. Look at David, lowly shepherd boy, all the way up to the king, the highest in the land. So, you know, I just love the thought of that, of how he answered him. He's like, yes, I am the Christ. And from this point on, you're going to see me in my power and my glory. So if you're a Christian, you really need to not be ashamed because the person who you follow, Jesus, is, is sitting at God's right hand right now. And one day he's going to return in power and glory. And it's going to be like one of those movies where the whole world saw someone in one light. Because how many History Channel videos or other cults or whatever say, yeah, Jesus, a feeble teacher, philosopher. No, he's coming as the most powerful person in the universe. So try to take that and meditate on it. Jesus said, I am, and one day you will see the Son of Man sitting at his right hand in the place of honor and power coming in the clouds of heaven. So you know that he is glorified. And this is reminiscent of another verse in the book of Daniel, where it says, Behold, I saw 
one who looked like the Son of Man coming before the Ancient of Days, and to him was given a kingdom and power and glory which had no end. And I saw him coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then you see it again in the book of Revelation, where you see it says, Behold, I saw one like the Son of Man. And on his thigh was written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he was riding with horses in the clouds coming, you know, in great power. So myself personally, you know, I don't like the whole uh, humanistic, evolutionary uh, blindness that I see all the time on like Discovery Channel or, uh, you know, the liberal left propaganda videos, basically, of, you know, we're just humans and we're superior, but there's no God and none of that. And it really upsets me because they'll sit there and they'll talk about how amazing this fish is, how amazing this tree canopy is, but they never give credit to God. And just like this, one day, everybody's going to acknowledge him for who he is. It's like as if there's a painting sitting in a museum and at the bottom it says Leonardo da Vinci, right? And Leonardo da Vinci's like waiting for people to say, man, great painting. But people are like, wow, look at this painting, the shading, the color, the realism. It's amazing. All oh, this is such a great painting. And the painting praises itself or no one comes over and says, Leonardo, you did a great job. It's like these scientists praising the creation, but never praising the one who created it. Someone praising a painting while the painter standing there like, yeah, thank you. And they're just, you, know, you don't even exist. So... This type of verse gives me hope because a lot of times I pray to God and I'm like, God, I believe in you. I know you created all this. I give you the glory and the credit for it. So take heart. If you're a follower of Christ, you're on the right side of the whole universal scheme. In this world, you might get laughed at, picked on, persecuted. Some countries you're, you're ostracized or put to death. America, we're pretty, uh, we just get persecuted. Like the, We're like the fringe um, they don't, uh, they like to call Christians the, uh, conservative far right, uh, clinging to their guns and their religion, but I don't cling to a religion. I cling to a person who's sitting on the throne, you know, who did most amazing things <clears throat> and I'll give him credit for all that. So try to find a movie that you can think of or watch Undercover Boss or whatever and think of Christ in those ways. He came here. But it's not how we're always going to see him. So try to keep that in perspective. Thank you for joining. And I hope it really uplifts you and helps you. Take care.